Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to talk a bit about fan noise on HP servers, or more specifically, how to make HP Gen 8 and Gen 9 servers more quiet. I see a lot of people complaining that when you add either PCI cards or hard drives with non-HP firmware into these servers, the fans ramp way up and the noise gets unbearable for a home environment. And while that is true, that does happen, there is a way to solve this and make the servers pretty much silent. So let's head over to the server room for a minute and I'll give you a quick demo of what we can do. Alright, so here we are in the server room and you can hear it's really, really loud. The one we can hear right now with the screaming fans is this one right here, DL380E Gen 8. Um, now because of the PCI cards I've got installed in there, the fans are running at about 65% right now. Way, way, way too loud. But down here, got a laptop. Got a little script I'm about to run, fan.sh. So if I press enter on that, you'll see it goes through, it runs some commands. It takes about 15 seconds to get through it all. But you'll see that very soon... Here we go, the fan speed's already beginning to drop. There you go, script has now finished running and the fans are at about 15%. And the server is close to silent, like... Yeah, honestly, I can hear the hard drives clicking over the fan noise. So, yeah, that's what it does. Now, I want to point out I didn't create this technique. I'm just sharing my experience with how to get it all working because it can be a bit confusing. It took me a while to properly learn what all the data that it was showing me meant and how all the different commands work together. It's really not self-explanatory at all, so hopefully I can help you get it set up with less effort than what it took me. So yeah, with that out of the way, a user by the name of Phoenix Dev posted this on Reddit a while back. It's um, a modified version of HP's ILO firmware, which re-enables a hidden internal feature that lets you manually tweak the fan curves. I think it's something that was probably used by HP internally for development or something. Now, it is based on version 2.73, which is a little bit older now. It's not ancient, but it's not the latest either. Um, I did see just yesterday when I was um, getting ready to make this video that there's actually a newer one now. There's 277. That only came out just three months ago. Um, I haven't tried this yet. I assume it does work, because if you look down at the comments, people sound happy and they're saying it's all fine. But uh, yeah, I don't have experience with this one yet, and this video will be based on the older one. Yeah, so it's pretty easy to get the modified firmware installed. You really just follow the step-by-step -step instructions here, there's not much to it. If you're watching this video now, then I think you're going to have no trouble at all with the installation. The point of this video is not to walk you through the installation, it's to walk you through the post-installation configuration. The first thing you need to do is log into the ILO interface via SSH. So let's bring up a terminal here and do that. Now the username here is case sensitive. So if you're using the default administrator account like I am, make sure to use the capital A. Right, now one thing you might find is that you log in, it all looks okay like this, but when you run a command, like for example, help, uh, okay, that's a bad example. When you run the fan command, which I will get to in a minute, don't worry, but let's just run this as a test. You will see it gives me no output at all, completely blank. Um, now the commands are actually running here. It did actually run this command internally, but what happened was the output for the command, which should have been printed here, actually got redirected to a different console session, and so it was just lost and we never saw it. Um, now there's an easy fix for that, so what you do is you just go to your ILO web interface like this, go to Information, Diagnostics, then click Reset. This takes around a minute or so, so let's fast forward through that. Okay, we're back online, so now if we go back to the terminal, session obviously terminated, so log back in again. Alright, and now if we run the same command, now we get the output. So if you have that problem, that's how to fix that. Now, this fan command lets you do a lot of things. 
You can simply just set all the fans to run at a low speed. Like you can say something like, right, I want every fan to run at 10%, but um, that's a really bad idea because then that means as the server starts to get hotter, the fans won't ramp up and well, it's going to overheat, so don't do that. So what you're better off doing is tweaking the sensors and the fan curves. So I'll run you through the process for how I do that. So can I clear this? No. Anyway, alright. So first thing to do is run fan info G. Okay, so that gives us a bit of information. So we've got eight rows here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Each one of these rows is a fan in the server. So this particular server we're looking at is a DL360P Gen 8, which has eight fans, hence eight of these. Now this um, fastest output here, that's showing you the current speed of this particular fan. And uh, this is not a percentage, this is not saying it's running 100%. Um, it's just a coincidence that it happens to be 100 right now. This is a value out of 255. So 100 here is probably somewhere around 40%. In fact, we can actually log in and check the exact percentage. Let's come in here. Yeah, 39%. So fans are running at 39% right now. Um, what this other part here with the big long list of numbers are showing you comes all the way to here. These are the different sensors that this particular fan is reading from to determine what speed it should run at. So it's reading from sensors 2, 5, 9, 11, 12, and so on and so on and so on. Now the way it calculates the target speed, which in this case is 100, from all these different sensors is quite simple. It actually just takes the highest value out of all these sensors and makes that the target speed. This little asterisk here is showing us which sensor that is that has the highest value. So it's the one to the left. So in this case, it's sensor 31. So basically sensor 31 is saying I want speed 100 and all the other sensors, they're all saying something that's less than 100. It doesn't really matter what they are. So that's how that works. So once you've worked out which sensor is making the fans run faster, and in this case, every single fan is actually 31. So 31 is the problem sensor right now. You run fan info A. And that shows us a list of all the different sensors. Here's 31 here, that's the one that's causing us problems. Now there's a lot of data here, but honestly the only things you really need to pay attention to is this column, this column, and this column. So if we scroll up to the top, so this first one here is lower limit. So this means that sensor 31, the lowest speed this sensor will let the fan run at is 100. Again, remember that's out of 255. High limit is, as the name suggests, the maximum speed the fan, uh, the maximum speed the sensor will ask the fan to run at. So 242 is basically 100%, 242 out of 255. And this one here, which is called previous drive for some reason, that's a very odd name for it. This is essentially the current speed. I don't know why they call it previous drive, but yeah. So this sensor is currently requesting that the fan runs at speed 100 out of 255. What's going on in this particular case is the sensor is trying to run the fan at its lowest possible speed. However, the problem is the sensor's lowest speed is too high. It's 100. So what we can do in this case is quite simple. If we run fan PID 31 low low to adjust the low limits, and then we can give it a value. So we can change this 100, make it something else. Um, the number you use is really up to you, it's personal preference. I like to use uh, 16. Um, you do have to multiply the number by 100 though. So if you want 16 to appear here, you actually need to write 1600. I think that's to do with the decimal point. I think what you're actually saying is I want 16.00. But yeah, if we write that, Yep, working with P31 means it worked. So then if we run fan info A again, we now see that 31, the low is 16, and you can see the current speed is dropping. It's 96, now it's 89, now it's 87, now it's 85. So these things do gradually change over time. Don't expect that as soon as you press enter, it just 
bang, immediately it's now running at speed 16. Um, it does do an average over a period of time. So yeah, be patient, let it do its thing, and it will get there. So yeah, let's run fan info G again. So 31 is no longer a problem, that's working. Now it's 40 that's the problem. So go back into fan info A again, have a look at 40. And we have the same problem here, minimum 100, maximum 242, current 100. So let's just run the exact same command, pid 40 this time, low 1600, fan info A, uh, and where are, yep, so it's dropping, 98, 90, 88, okay, so what now? So the fans are still running at 100, so even though we've modified two sensors, we actually haven't made any difference at all to the current fan speed, so they're still just as loud as they were, but we're getting there, so 45 now. So fan info A, let's have a look at 45. Again, it's the same. The minimum 100 is causing the problem, so fan PID 45, low 1600. And that worked, it's gradually dropping. Have a look now, now it's 46. Now we can see that right there, we don't even need to run it again. Same again, fan PID 46, low 1600. And that's beginning to drop, so what's happening now in the fan groupings? Now we're on 49, which we can See, again, it's the same thing. Um, don't worry, there is something a bit different coming later. This video is not just the same thing over and over a hundred times. There is a trick you'll need later on. So 49. Yep, and now 50. Again, we can see it's the same thing again. 100, uh, fan pit 50, low 1600. Okay, so now that we've done all that, so the first one we did was 31. We can see 31 has a current speed of 16, so that's dropped way, way, way down. Then we did 40, which is also currently running at 16. That one worked. Then we did 45, which is currently running at 58. So you can see that depending on the sensor and what it's monitoring, it doesn't necessarily drop right down to the low. Sometimes it does sit somewhere in between, in this case 58. In the case of 46, it's on 73. Um, and in the case of 49 and 50, I'll run the command again. So you can see these ones are actually still up a little bit. Um, I can tell you from experience, having done this before, these particular sensors will never actually drop to 16. Um, so that means that in the fan speeds, you can see we've only actually dropped by 3 out of 255, which is essentially 1% due to this PID50. So really, we've made no difference at all. So what I do in this case, I actually disable this sensor altogether because it's obviously not doing what it's meant to. It thinks that a device is running really hot when in reality it's actually not. So let's just disable it. So what you do there is you go fan, T, sensor number, off. There you go, temp 50 is off. And then if we run fan info G again, you can see 50 is now gone from this list. It was at the end, you can see it right there, now it's gone, so 50 is not being looked at. And instantly the fans have dropped down to 80 from 97. And now it's PID 35 that's causing it to run faster, so let's look at 35. Now 35 again is similar to the last one, so we can see minimum is 75, however current is actually 85. So this is another one where the, the um, output sits somewhere between the minimum and the maximum. So if I was to drop the minimum to 16 or any other value right now, it wouldn't actually affect this at all. If this minimum was 16, this would still be 85. So in this case, let's do the same and turn 35 off. We go, disabling temp 35. Then if we run a fan info G, look at that, the fans are way, way, way down. 51 out of 255. And in fact, I can hear through the doorway down the corridor, the server is now silent, 
whereas previously I could hear it. So if we come back here and have a look, 20%, every single fan 20%, which is half what they were to begin with. Um, now having done this before, I can tell you that running all these fans at 20% actually causes some other things in the system to get a bit warmer than I'm comfortable with. Um, the main thing that does that is the RAID controller, the P420i. Um, that does get up to something like 65 degrees if I have the fans running this low. So what I like to do, I actually like to set a global minimum speed on the fans. So if you run fan P and then the fan ID, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So fan P0, min, and then give it a value of what you want the minimum fan speed to be. In this case, let's say, let's say 66. And then if we run fan info G again, you can see fan zero is running at 66, which is now set by this minimum global fan speed. So I like to go through and just do that for all the fans. One, two, five, six, seven. And then if we do a fan info G, every fan is running at 66. And if the server starts to warm up because I'm running some, uh, you know, processing on the CPU, or even if simply just because the ambient temperature starts to rise, then they will speed up more. And so they're running at 25% right now, which is pretty quiet. So yeah, that's how to do that. Yeah, so it really just comes down to personal preference, how far you want to go with this. Um, like you've seen, you can really do anything you want. If you wanted, you could turn off every single sensor and have the fans run at zero. Of course, that's just crazy though, so don't do that. Um, I guess it depends on a few things. One, what sort of climate do you live in? Um, is your house cool normally? Is it hot normally? So in other words, what sort of airflow do you have through the server? Um, also, it depends on how comfortable you are running the server warmer than perhaps HP intends it to run. Um, so like I said before, things like the RAID chipset do get quite warm when you have the fans running slowly. So yeah, keep an eye on your temperatures under the, the, um, the ILO interface. Um, and also, the third thing is it just depends on what sort of noise level you're comfortable with. Like if you have your servers in a room with a door you can shut, you can probably tolerate more noise than if the server was in your bedroom or your living area or something. So yeah, just play around with it, do some experimentation and find out what works for you. So the final thing to do is put all those commands you just ran into a script and have that script run either automatically or if you'd rather do it manually, that's fine after your server boots up. How you do that really depends on what OS you're running. Um, there's hundreds of guides out there already for how to automatically run things after boot up, so I'm not going to go through it here, but yeah, do a search and you'll find something. Um, the only thing you really have to do is make sure to install your SSH public key from wherever you're running the script from, whether it's an ESXi server or an Ubuntu, um, Ubuntu installation or something, put your SSH public key from there into the ILO settings. Actually, I'll show you where to do that. Go to administration. Uh, is it security? Yes, secure shell key, you tick that, you go to authorize new key, you paste your public key into there, import, and then that's it. And then now your Ubuntu, ESXi, whatever it is, you can SSH into the ILO interface without a password. Um, yeah, because without that, you won't be able to have this automatically run at boot up, because as soon as your script tries to SSH in to run these commands, it will just sit there prompting for the password. So yeah, that's it. I hope this video has been helpful. Give it a like, give me a subscribe, comment down below what you think. Yeah, catch you later.